Yo, this is the Clockwork Pi Pico Calc. It's a Raspberry Pi Pico based DIY kit that you build yourself. And if you got one, it's about to get a serious upgrade. Well, I'm Jay Blanks, the creator of PicoWare, and I've packed so much into this new version 1.5.6 release. We're talking a ton of new apps, including four new games, a new way to message your friends, and Bluetooth support. On top of that, there are huge quality of life improvements, including a snappier UI, better networking, and a ton of other tweaks that just make the device so much better. So today, I'll show you all all of the cool new features of version 1.5.6. Then I'll walk you through a complete beginner friendly guide to get it installed right now. So whether you've been using PicoWare for a while or you just got your PicoCalc, this video is for you. Okay, before we see it in action, let's quickly dive into what makes version 1.5.6 a must have. So the big headlines this time are mainly the apps. I've added a suite of classic games like Sudoku, Tower Defense, Minesweeper, and Breakout. These are awesome additions to the game library, making the PicoCalc an even better little handheld for gaming. And next, I've also added a Telegram app. Using a Telegram bot, you can now send and receive messages directly on your PicoCalc. This turns your device into a powerful communication tool. And for another major connectivity upgrade, I've added a full Bluetooth menu with advertised pair and scan apps. So this pretty much opens a whole new world of wireless projects and accessories. But the changes go deeper than just some new apps. I've also focused on major quality of life improvements. Now, this update does include some breaking API changes, but for you, that just means a more stable, more efficient system that's ready for future updates. And if you're a developer with custom MicroPython scripts, you may need to tweak them slightly, but it was a necessary step to keep the platform modern. You'll literally feel the difference the second you boot up. The menus are snappier, the desktop animations have been improved, and tiny but annoying bugs have been squashed. All these little improvements add up, making it feel like a much more professional device. So a quick recap, you're getting a bunch of new games led by Sudoku, a few new screensavers, a Telegram app for messaging, a full Bluetooth menu, and a host of quality of life improvements that make the whole system faster and smoother. It's a pretty big leap forward. Okay, now that you know what's in it, let's get it installed. This next part is a full step-by-step -step tutorial, which is perfect for anyone new to PicoWare or custom firmware. I'll walk you through everything from start to finish. Well, first, what do you need? Not much, just your PicoCalc, a micro USB cable that can handle data, and a computer. The entire installation is just dragging and dropping files, so no special software is needed. Okay, step one is to download the files from the official PicoWare GitHub. The link is in the description. On the GitHub page, you need to grab two things. First is the .uf2 file, which is the firmware file itself. You'll find it in the builds, MicroPython, and there they go. Now, it is critical that you get the correct .uf2 file for your specific hardware. Now, the PicoCalc has shipped with the Raspberry Pi Pico. So if you're using the board that came with your device, you need the standard PicoWare PicoCalc Pico.uf2 file. If you've upgraded to a Pico W for Wi-Fi or a newer Pico 2, make sure you download that specific file. And the second thing you need is the apps folder, which is also inside the builds slash MicroPython directory. And optionally, if you're using a Pico W or Pico 2W, you can download these wirelessly using the on-device app store. 
Okay, step two, put your Pico Calc in bootloader mode. This prepares it for the new firmware. First, we need to make sure the Pico Calc is completely off by holding the power button. And now we need to turn it to the back like so. Next, we need to find the boots select button on the Raspberry Pi Pico board. Now I have a special case from the user N602 which completely exposes the Pico, but you can still access this button through one of the vents on the back of the stock Pico Calc case. You might need like a small toothpick or something to gently press it. So plug your micro USB cable into your computer and then go and hold that boot select button on your Pico and plug in the micro USB cable. Once you see a drive on your computer appear, you can let go of that button. Okay, so your computer will detect the PicoCalc as a new USB drive, likely named RPI-RP2 if you're using a Pico or Pico W, or named RP2350 if you're using a Pico 2 or Pico 2 W. So step three is flashing the firmware in. This is literally the easiest part. Find that .uf2 file you downloaded and then just drag and drop it onto the drive that appeared. Like literally, that's it. The file will copy over, it'll take a bit, but once it's done, the PicoCalc will automatically eject and reboot itself. And that's it. You've just installed PicoWare version 1.5.6. But wait, there's one last crucial step to get all the apps running. Now, you can skip this if you want to download the apps wirelessly on your device. If not, step four is to set up the SD card. So pop it out of your PicoCalc and put it into your computer. Then on your drive, you need to create a folder on the SD card named PicoWare if there isn't one already. Then you need to copy the entire apps folder that you downloaded into that PicoWare folder, like so. And then once it's copied, safely eject the card, put it back in your PicoCalc, and then turn it on. Okay, now the moment you boot it up, the old firmware is gone, replaced by the new PicoWare desktop that I designed. You'll see the updated animation and a clean interface with status icons at the top for things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and battery. And navigating is extremely easy. You can just use the D-pad to move around. Pressing up or pressing enter from the desktop brings you to the app library, which is pretty much the heart of PicoWare. Here, you can access all of the apps you copied over. You can scroll through and find the code editor, the file manager, and of course, if we go up and click on applications, you'll see the new apps. Now, if you didn't do the SD card copy and paste method and you're using a Pico W or Pico 2 W, go back to the library view. You can go up and click on Wi-Fi. Um, and then in the settings, we need to type in your Wi-Fi SSID and your Wi-Fi password. Then after that, go back and then go up and click connect. Sometimes Wi-Fi connection can be a little wonky. So sometimes you need to go and click up to disconnect and then click right again to connect. And then it, you should do it right away. If not, just click up again. I mean, mine did connect, but if you didn't, just go and click up and then click right again and it will attempt to connect. Okay, so now we need to go and click back, back again, and then go down twice to our app store. Now inside of the app store, you can download all the apps literally just by clicking on download all apps. Okay, with all that out the way, let's find the new Sudoku app within the games menu. Go open to your library, scroll down and click games, and then scroll down and click right here, and then click enter. Now from here, you can choose the difficulty with the default being medium and just click enter. And here we are. As you can see, it loads up right away and it's ready to play. If you go back, back again, and then into our applications, you will see the Telegram app. Let's scroll down. Here we are and click enter. 
And to get this set up, you need to enter your bot token and your chat ID. Then you can go and send messages or view messages right away on your Pico code. We can also head over to the Bluetooth menu, which is a new menu. Scroll down, Bluetooth. And within here, we can scan for new devices, we can pair with a device, or we can simply make our PicoCalc discoverable with the advertise option. But for me, the real power here is turning your calculator into a tiny computer you can actually code on. From the library, you can open the code editor, then you can either create a new file or click to edit an existing one and then start writing MicroPython code right on the device. For learning and tinkering on the go, that's a total game changer. Well, that's the complete tour of PicoWare version 1.5.6. You're now running the latest and greatest firmware on your PicoCalc. And one thing I forgot to mention, in one of the new screensaver apps, it uses a frame buffer that is stored in the PS RAM. The app is called Patterns PS RAM. And once it starts, it will initialize the frame buffer. And then as you click enter, it will draw different patterns to the buffer. And then it will send the PS RAM buffer to the display. Now, if this video helped you out, a thumbs up would definitely be awesome. And maybe consider subscribing for more PicoCal guides and content. Now, I'm actually really proud of what was accomplished with this release. And the whole project is really driven by feedback from you, the community. So head down in the comments and let me know what's your favorite new feature in this update. Is it the games, Telegram, Bluetooth? And more importantly, what do you want to see built into the next version of PicoWare? Also, make sure to check out the description for links to the official PicoWare GitHub and my Discord server. The Discord is the best place to get help, share what you're working on, chat directly with me, and get direct updates about PicoWare. This update truly transforms the PicoCalc into an incredibly versatile and powerful little handheld. Whether you're a student, a pro developer, or a hobbyist, this PicoWare update opens new possibilities. I'm Jay Blanked. Thanks for watching. Peace.